Hello everyone, and welcome to BioScholar. Let's talk about chromosomes. Chromosomes are long, thread-like structures. They are made of DNA and proteins. They carry genetic information, from your eye color to your height. And they found inside the nucleus of every cell. So, I said chromosomes are made up of DNA and proteins. DNA makes up most of its structure. It is the molecule that carries your genetic information in the form of codes. It has a double helix shape, two long strands twisted around each other. Then comes the protein part. These are special proteins called histones. DNA wraps around these histones. Histones are typically arranged in groups of eight, forming a structure called a histone octama. This octama serves as the core around which DNA is wrapped to form a nucleosome, the basic unit of chromatin. Each octama consists of two copies each of four different histone proteins, H2A, H2B, H3, and H4. This wrapping helps fold and organize the DNA so it doesn't get tangled. This group of histones and the wrapped DNA forms repeating units, and these units are called nucleosomes. These nucleosomes pack tightly together to form chromatin. Chromatin is the uncondensed form of genetic material, but when the cell gets ready to divide, chromatin coils and condenses further into visible chromosomes. A chromosome has several key parts. This is the central constricted region, called the centromere. It plays a crucial role during cell division, acting as the attachment point for spindle fibers. These fibers help separate chromosomes accurately during mitosis and meiosis. At the ends of the chromosome are the telomeres, protective caps that prevent the chromosome ends from fraying or sticking to other chromosomes. Telomeres also play a role in cell aging and stability. During cell division, each chromosome is duplicated, resulting in two identical sister chromatids joined at the centromere. Each chromosome is divided into two arms by the centromere. The short arm is called the P-arm. P stands for petty, a French word meaning small. The long arm is called the Q-arm, simply because it comes after P in the alphabet. These arms are used to identify the location of genes on a chromosome. For example, if a gene is located at 7Q31, it means chromosome number 7, long arm, position 31. Here is the Kineto core a protein structure that forms on the centromere during cell division. It serves as the attachment point for spindle fibers, ensuring accurate separation of chromatids. Satellite is a small segment of a chromosome separated from the main body by a secondary constriction. It often contains genes for ribosomal RNA and plays a role in nucleolus formation. So, these are the major parts of a chromosome. Now, Based on the position of the centromere, chromosomes are divided into four types. First, we have the metacentric chromosome. In this type, the centromere is located exactly in the middle, resulting in two arms of equal length. The P-arm and the Q-arm are almost the same size. Next is the submetacentric chromosome. Here, the centromere is slightly off-center, creating one short arm, P-arm, and one longer arm, Q-arm. Then comes the acrocentric chromosome. In this type, the centromere is located very close to one end, making one arm extremely short and the other very long. And finally, the telecentric chromosome. The centromere is positioned at the very end of the chromosome. It appears to have only one arm. It's important to note that telecentric chromosomes are not found in humans, but they are present in some animal species like mice. Speaking of humans, Humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Out of these, 22 pairs are autosomes. They carry genes for general body functions. The 23rd pair is the sex chromosomes, which determine the biological sex of an individual. In females, the sex chromosomes are XX, while in males, they are XY. The photograph or visual arrangement that shows all the chromosomes of an individual is called a karyotype. It is used to identify chromosomal abnormalities, such as extra or missing chromosomes, or structural defects. This is it for today's episode on chromosomes. I'll be covering the concept of homologous chromosomes in a separate video. 
And if you missed the last episode on mitosis, click here to watch it now.